Hey, welcome back friends. One of the most popular handheld power tools is the circular saw or the worm drive saw. If you're looking to take your saw to the next level, I have an accessory today that I wanna show you that I think you're gonna like. Today's tool review features the skate plate and skate guide combo pack. And this type of accessory is made for the professional or the DIY user, and it allows for straight, repeatable cuts. It's made of ultra strong GFN, which stands for glass filled nylon. And the thing that sets this apart from other saw guides I've used, this has has durable polyurethane rollers on it with Delrin bearings. And the rollers keep the saw going in a straight line and then there's the guide which helps to give you repeatable cuts. So you just set up your measurement and then go ahead and start cutting. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. So the edge guide right here, this is adjustable right here. And then right here you can see it, there's a roller there and then down there that is a roller as well. And then the edge right here has four different rollers. So that goes on the edge of your material. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about in a few minutes when I demonstrate this on some plywood. This is a little bit different than what you may have seen like some other edge guides. Let me just show you really quick a couple other edge guides that I've done some reviews on just to show you how this compares to that. The first edge guide I ever bought for my right-handed, the Sidewinder saw, was this right here. This is the AccuRip. So this one's a little bit different. It does have measurements on it. So you can see on the bottom right there all the friction that this has had, cutting plywood and things like that. The one issue that I've had with this, it takes a nice steady hand when you're finishing your cut and you have this edge guide right here that goes along. Sometimes once it gets past the edge of like your plywood, this could veer off to the side a little bit so your, your final cut might not have something to continue to support it so it veers off a little bit. So that's been my issue with this right here. But other than that, you know, it's worked pretty well. And it goes up to 24 inches. So another edge guide I reviewed is this Craig one right here. I also put the same Sidewinder saw on that. I haven't tested this out with the worm gear style saw yet, but it looks like it could go right here and then you just make some adjustments with your gauge right here. You move that over there. So this goes up to 24 inches as well. And this edge right here is a lot better than the other one but to store this, it's just quite a bit to bring with you, like if you're going to a job site. So if you guys have tried one of these, let me know how that's held up for you. So the skate plate right here is a little bit different because it has these rollers right here, which help keep it going on a continual path. And then I like the handle on the edge right here with these rollers, because then you can hold on to that and back here and you can hold it tight up against your material. So I found that when you get to the edge of this, it continues to go straight. So it might take a little bit of practice a few times to really get the hang of this, how it works, but um, I learned how to adjust pretty quick. Earlier today, I did get a measurement of the widest cut I can make with this, and I think it was somewhere like right around 12 inches. If you wanna to go to 24 inches, they do sell another accessory right here. I think it's around $30. I'll put it down below how much it is, and that will get you up to 24 inches. And that's just a longer edge guide if you need it. So there are some custom things you can do to this. If you want to turn the rollers around and take this handle off right here, you could have the rollers going up against something. So let's say you want to cut like 10 inches off a wall. You could flip that around and put that on this if you want. So one of the nice features about the skate plate is when you take the edge guide off, you still have this nice shoe right here. So if you want to do some like diagonal cuts or something like that, you can just leave this on there and you don't have like anything flopping around. So the, you see the skate plate right here is solidly clamped on to the shoe of this DeWalt worm gear style saw. So it's starting to get a little dark outside. So we're going to go inside the shop under the brighter lights. And I'm going to show you real quick how the skate plate installs with the turn of three screws. So here's a closer look at it under some better lighting. All right, so I wanna show you some of the features advertised on the packaging. So it shows that it's three easy steps. You lower the saw in, number one. Number two, you tighten the locking screws. And number three, you slide the clamps forward. So it's designed for rip cuts, notch cuts, framing, finished carpentry, flooring, masonry, and stone fabrication. So if you're wondering if this right here will fit your saw, you can go to the website right there, skateplate.com. Now I actually didn't see where this model number of this saw right here was listed, 
but I was able to make it work on here. Now my other saw, let me just show you. This is my other worm gear style saw, the Milwaukee. Now this one has a bigger shoe on it. Let me get a measurement for you. It's a little over 13, about 13 and 1 eighth of an inch. The DeWalt is much less, it's about 12 and a quarter. So today I went through and did a lot of cuts with it. You can just see all the sawdust in there. And it definitely locked into place really well and it really did a nice job. So I'm gonna take the saw out real quick and reinstall it just to show you how fast and easy it is. So in the back right here, this is the slide clamp. I just pulled that all the way back. And then I have two screws right here. This one up front and then this other one, let's see, this one up over here on this side. If I unscrew that, that allows me to take the saw right out of the track right there. So the slide clamp right here I took out of the very back here. That way the Milwaukee saw will fit in it. So I recommend always taking the battery out when you're installing it. So there's actually less than a quarter inch to spare. So what would be nice is if they made this version just a little bit longer, just so you had a little bit of room to play in there. So I might be able to put this in the very back right here. There's hardly any room at all. Okay, I'm gonna take it back out. I'm gonna see if I can make it work with this. Definitely fits the DeWalt saw better. So I put that other slide clamp in the back right there and took this angled one out. So that seems to be working. So let me try this out. I put the weight all the way forward and to this side. I'm gonna tighten that down right there. And under the shoe, tighten this one down. I'm gonna tighten this so it doesn't move at all. Okay, looks like we are good. All right, it's a little more work to get the Milwaukee saw to fit. And if you can see here, there is not an inch to spare, not even a quarter inch to spare. It's like right there on their tight. So I'm gonna set this up on a piece of plywood right here. And I wanted to show you how these take out the friction and they just glide. All right, so check this out. You see how that rolls right there? So right now I have the saw raised all the way up and I have the guard pulled back and just taped into place temporarily. So you can just see how there's like hardly any friction. Can you hear that rolling? So this is designed to roll straight. So once you get past your cut right here, it just tends to keep rolling straight. And I like right here, you have your handle right on the end. So you can press it right up against here and just guide it. Because the last thing you want is it to veer off to the side a little bit. So I just want to be clear on some of the other edge guides, there is a measurement on here. With this one, if you're going to cut four inch strips, you measure over here four inches, put a little mark right there, and then you set your saw up right here and loosen that until you see it right on that four inch mark, which would be right there. Tighten it down and then you're good to go. So now that we've seen how this works in concept, let's go outside and put it to use and make some sawdust. Take a look at the measurement on the top we have four inches middle four inches and the bottom four inches then a couple other accessories they have these spacers right here so one spacer goes right there so if you have a certain saw different type of saw you may have to push it back a little bit and then the other spacer goes in from the bottom right there you can push that in there and that will just push the entire saw back a little bit, depending on what length you have. So with my experience, I didn't feel like I needed the spacers with the DeWalt saw. That's probably the saw that I will use with this because it just fits the easiest. And this is one of the things, I didn't have this rotating foot on there. It's almost like a displacement pad. So that's something I just put on here. So let's see how that works with the DeWalt saw real quick. 
and push that in the back right up tight to it. There. That feels a little bit better. So yeah, I recommend putting those pivot feet on there. It's a little bit extra work in the install initially, but it's worth it. It just locks it in a little tighter. What's interesting is I can remember the very first time that somebody introduced an edge guide to one of my circular saws, my old Sidewinder. I was working on a particular job. I might even have a picture of it. If I do, I'm gonna put it up here. It was, it was several years ago and the framing crew, they were short somebody and I was helping to fill in because we really needed to get something wrapped up that day. I'm not sure if it was weather moving in or something, but we needed to get the walls and the sheathing put on. So I remember helping out doing all my cuts and I'm running chalk lines and somebody said, hey, you should try this right here. And they just had a simple edge guide and I hooked it up to my saw and it just seemed like I was working like three times faster. It was just awesome. I really liked it. So I went out like the next time I was in the store and I bought the AccuRip right here, which worked really well, it got me by for a while. So now I'm just really excited to see the improvements made along the way with circular saws and the edge guides. So like the skate plate right here is just something I think is really exciting. What do you guys think about it? Please put your comments or your questions down below. Hopefully I've been able to help you guys out. I'm gonna just check the website right now so I can give you the most accurate pricing as of today. So this kit right here that I showed you that has the skate plate and the skate guide, this is $79. It is a little bit pricey, but if you're comparing it to, like if you're wanting to go out and buy a table saw, and you're just trying to get nice straight cuts, this might be something that, even though it's a little pricier, it might be something worth considering. So let me know what you think. So my goal in this video is to put the skate plate worm drive to the test and show you all the functions and features. So in case you're considering the purchase of it, hopefully you can see if it's right for you. If there's something that I left out, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll have a link down below where you can check out their website and then uh, check the most current prices. And if you enjoy this video, you find it interesting, helpful, informative, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it, friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.